Hello, everyone, and welcome to Health for Niger podcast. Today, I have an incredible speaker with me. Her name is Dr. Shakirat Gold Olu Fadi. She's a consultant dermatology in Nigeria. Welcome, Dr. Shakirat. It's so nice to have you on board. Thank you, Dr. Ngozi. I'm happy to be here. I am so excited to be here today. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I, I reached out to you on Twitter. Um, I saw a book you'd written and I was really um, looking forward to talking to you today because um, you wrote this book called Medi Medithrive and it's about coping in medical school. And today we title this talk, What Medical Students and Residents Need to Know to Thrive. So I'm gonna hand the mic over to you. Okay. Um, thank you once again, Dr. Ngozi, for having me. This is, um, I'm very happy to be here to talk about my book, to talk about a few tips and um, why exactly I wrote the book Medithrive. So I recall, you know, many years back, not so many years back, but when I was a medical student. And one thing that I realized about medical school in Nigeria, not even just medical school, I think about growing up in Nigeria is that um, this lack of, you know, mentorship, this lack of having people that you can turn to, that you can talk to, that can, you know, show you the way or to show you a better way to navigate the journey. And there's, there's a Yoruba adage. I like speaking adages a lot, and you're going to find a lot of that in my book. There's a Yoruba adage that says, um, that means that the horse in front is the one that helps the one coming behind to teach the horse how to run. You know, So sometimes a lack of mentors, a lack of direction, guidance, just makes you not navigate the journey properly. Or even when you navigate the journey, it's with a lot of, you know, tears and pain and all that. So right from when I was in secondary school, writing had been something that I love to do. In fact, let, let me say primary school. And my dad noticed that his daughter loved to play with big words. So I would say something and I'll be like, daddy, what's the meaning of this word? And he would be like, let's use this word in sentences throughout the week. And so we had like Every week we were learning new words and all that. And so it wasn't surprising when I got to secondary school, I started to write articles for, I was in press club. I was the vice president of press club. I was writing articles. I was the library prefect, all those kind of things. But you know, um, in Nigeria, it is often said that the three professions are to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be an engineer. So I was one of the you know, top students in primary school and it was drummed into my ears. I wanna be a doctor, I wanna be a doctor. And I realized that, that that followed me all the way into secondary school. So I think I'm one of those students that will probably have excelled in an art related course rather than medicine. But one way or the other, I found myself in medicine, typical of most top students in, in, in primary. I wasn't a top student per se in secondary school. I was in the top bracket, but not like when I was in primary school. But I found myself in medicine. I wrote the exams. I passed everything once, you know, wrote my jam, wrote my work. And before I knew it, I was right there at University of Illinois. And I entered secondary school really early. I was one of those students that left primary school double promotion twice. And I was in primary, I was in secondary school before I was 10. So everything was almost like a precocious move. So everything was just, it was just going like that. And I was just moving like that. But I was lucky because I, um, I had a lot of guidance from my parents, from my aunties, from my, I come from a closely knit family. Mm -hmm. But one thing that happened to me was that I got into the university. And, you know, like I said, I think I probably would have excelled better in an arts related course. So I got into the university and I saw that every medical student, they were going to night class, they were reading a lot, they were doing, all they were doing was, you know, the way a typical medical student is supposed to look like. You go to night class, you, after school, you don't do any, you don't have any fun per se, you keep reading. So I started medical school like that because I wanted to be like everybody else. Yeah. And my first semester result, I can never forget as a medical student, it was just shy. I think I got 48 or 49 in my first semester results. And Dr. Gonzi, you know that if, you, if I had continued like that, I probably wouldn't even have finished medicine. Right. So 
I think what happened to me was that I wanted to be like every other medical student. And I went into going to night class, going to the library, and all that got me was failure. I failed, like, in fact, the only reason why I got 49 was that other, other courses, they buffered my, my, because if it was the major medic, medical school courses, the first semester, I didn't pass. But the other ones buffered and I was able to get like 49. So okay. I think one day I was just reading and somebody was playing a radio close to me and there was a lot of noise, activity, and I was reading something. And I realized that everything I was reading that day Everything got absorbed quickly. I understood everything I was reading. And it took me back to the kind of person I was before I came into the university. So if you asked my classmates from high school, they will tell you that Shaki is the kind of person that two days to exam, if you see her reading a book, just go and check the middle of the book that she's probably reading a novel. She's not, <laughs> reading, the, she's not reading the book meant for the exam. If I, I didn't remember that until one of my classmates reminded me that that was exactly how you were. That two days to exam, you'll be listening to music and you still come out and you, you know, you'll get better marks than a lot of us that were reading you know, from throughout the night and all that. So it was not until I went back to the kind of person that I actually really am before I started to excel in medical school again. So I think the lesson I learned early on in medical school was that you need to know the kind of person that you are. A lot of people, we try to be other people on, along our journey, and we try to do things the way other people, they are doing it. And we'll realize that it's not working, but because we don't want to be seen as, you know, the outlier, we don't want to be seen as going against the norm. Nice. And we start to do things in a different way that is different from our regular personality. And it will not get you where you need to go because you are going against the natural course of the person that you are. So that was the first lesson I learned in medical school. And Dr. Ngozi, I can tell you that up till now, that know thyself, and that is the first chapter of my book. So my book is actually divided into 10 short chapters. And the first chapter says, know yourself, okay. know thyself. So what kind of person are you? You know, you need to know the kind of person that you are to be able to. And I think it's, it's not even about medical school because the title of the book says Medi Thrive, but it has a runner on that that says 10 simple yet effective rules to navigate medical school and residency. Then I have that crossed out and I changed it to adulting without tears and still glide through like a boss. Okay, that's <laughs> so, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, Dr. Shakira, you know, I agree with everything you said. Um, I know that when, when when I was in secondary school, I, I mean, I wanted to be a doctor when I was um, from the age of eight. But I know that there wasn't much of any kind of career counseling. And certainly um, I didn't know what I was getting myself in for when I was going to medical school. And a lot of people, I think, uh, especially in Nigeria, uh, like that, they don't, they choose a career and they don't really know what it entails. They decide, oh, um, they want to be a nurse, but they don't know what the training entails or how challenging it can be. So I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Yeah, right. Uh, so I, I, I think, um, like you said, the career counseling thing is not it's not really in place in Nigeria. And a lot of people get into whatever they studied, not by choice, but because maybe their parents felt they would do well as doctors or as nurses or as engineers, or their innate skills are not put to good use and not matched with whatever career they, that they've, that they've settled for. But another thing I, I, I've come to realize now is that the new set of doctors that are coming up now they are beginning to discover their innate talents and they are kind of matching it well with the course that is studied and they are finding, it. so the, the problem that they seem to have sometimes is finding a healthy balance between the two. So um, one of the major, major things that I was trying to put out there in MediThrive is that at the end of the day, whatever you decide to settle for, what is most important is that you are um, building a network, building a community that will push you towards whatever you are trying to achieve. 
So remember that I, I mentioned that my, my book is divided into 10 short chapters. So another thing I did to make it even more robust was that I reached out to a lot of colleagues. Some were people that I had known from medical school. Some were people I met online, just the same way I've met you online. But I saw that they were carving a niche for themselves. They were doing things differently. So I reached out to them, about eight different doctors. Some are abroad, some in Nigeria. Some have even left medicine completely. I reached out to them and I asked them to be contributors in the book. So I wanted, you know, you know, they say variety is the spice of life. I wanted to put a lot of variety in, in the book to make sure that um, there's something in it for every medical student and for every resident. So like the first 10 chapters are from me. They are the parts that I, the first, let's say the first 11 chapters, I wrote them myself. And in this, 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 this 10, 11 short chapters, I was talking about the different ways, the different coping mechanisms, because everybody, medical school is tough. But there's a method to the madness of medical school. That is what I think. Yes. And the method to that madness can only be gotten if you look inwards, build a community. And that community is built by, you know, people around you. One thing that people fail to realize is that most times we can't do all these things alone. You need help. So you build that community of people with like minds that you can help each other, that you can, when, where you are, you are deficient, somebody is, you know, has in, somebody has something in abundance and you are kind of, you know, working together towards a common goal. So let me use an example of when I was in 100, 200 level. I, anatomy was something that I, till now, I, I still don't understand. I still never liked anatomy. I don't think I can ever like anatomy. Mm -hmm. But I had some friends that they really loved anatomy. In fact, I had a particular friend, Dr. Femi, really liked anatomy. And we had this good relationship where he would break down all the things that I needed to know in anatomy, how to understand it better. Mm -hmm. And he would break everything down for me. And it would be enough to pass the exams and not just pass, even excel in the exams. Mm -hmm. So building that strong community, that network is very important for medical school and residents. You know, the way we say it in Nigeria, follow mm -hmm. who no road, mm -hmm. you know, look for people that can show you the way and you build a community with them. Okay. You know. Okay. I mean, what you're saying is amazing. Um, I like the adage that you gave earlier on. <laughs> with the horse <laughs> I like that a lot um I've, I've ordered your book and I look forward to reading it Yay. yes <laughs> and I think that honestly medical school is challenging for most people and I think the fact that you've made this and that was one of the reasons I reached out to you on Twitter and I was like oh I'd like to talk to you on my podcast um because I think that um Knowledge is power, number one. And I think that there's no need for people to reinvent the wheel. If somebody has created a solution that works, why not lean into that solution? So in terms of your, your book, almost feeling like this is your book because it has so much richness of, um, let's say, wisdom, how to navigate this challenging space called medical school. It's something that I think secondary schools should give their students who want to go into the medical sciences, not just medical school. We're talking about, you know, nursing school and um, other medical sciences, because it's still the same, you know, sort of challenges that a lot of students face, especially, you know, you're getting into medical school very young. You probably went into medical school very young because you talked about uh, being um such a brainiac that you skipped over some classes so you got into medical school young and so people going into medical school young they don't really have either they're book smart but in terms of being street smart or being in terms of being life smart they haven't yet developed those skill sets um and and i really wish that uh, uh, schools would just order your book and put it in their libraries, secondary schools, and allow uh, students who are in secondary school to actually read your book so they know what to expect. Because a lot of times, uh, you know, 
medical students tend to be top notch. They tend to be the top of their classes from secondary school. But then when they get into medical school, you find some of them start struggling because it's exactly. completely different content. They don't have the coping skills. The environment can be toxic toxic environment exactly. and not nurturing exactly. um, and they don't really have the coping skills because they've gone from secondary school being talents in secondary school now you get into medical school and it's completely different so um, I mean I, I, I really do like um, you know the fact that you put this book together and I, I would really love to see your book in uh, libraries and secondary schools across not just Nigeria, um, Africa and globally, to be honest with you. Um, so tell me, how was your medical school and um, how was residency for you in Nigeria? Hmm. You know, when you mentioned uh, my book, Getting Into Schools and all that, that is my dream. And I am working towards that already because I have some schools where my book, my book, my books are in some schools already. I have people writing to me that their children are reading my. And the thing is, when I write, I write. Um, I try to be as simple as possible with my grammar. So um, my friend's eight-year-old was reading my book and saying, "Oh, Daddy, I really like this book. I really like this book." And I'm glad I was able to achieve that. So moving to how medical school and residency, how they were for me. And that's one of the reasons why I even wrote this book again. I suffered a huge tragedy just before I started medical school. Recall that I mentioned, I'm sure that if you've ever read from me on Twitter or any of my social media platforms, you will know that I'm a daddy's girl. <laughs> so I mentioned my dad a lot because he's, he was my role, role model. He was somebody that taught me about life at a very early stage. So I lost my dad just three months before starting medical school. So sorry. And I didn't just lose him, thank you so much. I didn't just lose him, you know, maybe he was ill. I lost him in a very horrific way. And it was, my dad was just 42 when he died. So mm. he was quite young. So it we was. were just going home, regular going home for Salah and armed robbers attacked and that was it. Oh, that is so and sad. So, very it, it has oh, and I, I i thank you so much i i i have gotten to a stage now where the grief doesn't attack me you know maybe publicly anymore but i tell you i think grief there's a way it holds on to you and i think with grief you learn lessons from it to the point that it shapes the rest of your life mm -hmm. so what i suffered then has um, shaped me into who i am today has taught me how to cope better with things. So I guess I'm the kind of person that um, a lot of people in, in scenarios where they would break down, I have had to be strong so many times because apart from being the first child in the family, I am, I am the kind of, you know, the kind of child that you call that I grew up so quickly. So even people that are way older than me sometimes come to me, oh, Shaki, what should we do in this case? It gets overwhelming, I can mm -hmm, tell you. Mm -hmm. But what it has helped me to achieve is that it helped me to um, build solid relationships. Right. So if anybody ever asks me that, how did you cope with medical school and residency? Mm -hmm. I will tell you it is by building solid relationships. Mm -hmm. That has been what has helped me through medical school, even with all the toxicity that people talk about. Mm -hmm. Every time I am with my tribe, with my people, with the people that, and when I say solid relationships, like you were mentioning that you have guests that you've called, that you've known for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that is the same thing that, that I have for, for myself. Mm -hmm. A lot of the friends that I have, they are people that I have known for 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. So, and one thing I realized that a lot of the medical students and residents are lacking these days, they don't know how to build strong and solid relationships. And no matter how much computers are replacing so many things, I believe that the human factor is so important in whatever we do. And again, life is moving. Medicine is moving towards the point where it is no longer, I'm a doctor. What are you offering extra? What soft skills have you developed that has made you a doctor that will stand out without any pressure on yourself? And there are things that you can develop that will make residency and medical school, things as simple as communicating, things as simple as, you know, writing your thoughts in clear, you know, lucid ways, 
So those, those are some of the things that helped me to cope in medical school and also making sure. So for example, if I want something, that was something my dad taught me early on in life. And that's something that I put in one of the chapters in my book. You don't, don't, don't be afraid to open your mouth and ask. Don't be afraid of people. And I tell people, this person is your consultant, is your senior registrar. Please don't be rude. But if you want something, if you need something, open your mouth and ask. Ask for help. That is the chapter nine of my book. Ask for help. A lot of people, they, they withdraw into themselves. They don't know how to ask for help from people. And maybe it comes from not helping others. So if you help others, if you have ever been of help to another person, ask for help when you need it. And so those are some of the things that helped me to go through medical school and residency. And it's still helping me till now, even as a consultant. Hey, this is really good stuff, honestly. <laughs> I wish we had more time to talk and talk. I think I, I would have you know, loved for you to give me some ideas of how um, people can communicate better or our medical school medical students going in can sort of grow their networks and um i know there's this book that i love it's by um dale carnegie called how okay, to dale. win friends okay. and influence people i think that is such the a funny great thing is book. that's that's one of my books that i'm about to read <laughs> so i think he was a he, he was a, a marketing sales guy and um yeah he really came up with so many ideas um, on his own. And I think some people just have that gift. You know, people have gift of different things and some people have gift of music, yeah. language, and some people just have a gift of wisdom. And that's why we're tapping into your wisdom today because you have this beautiful product out there. You have a book, it's on Amazon called MediThrive. And I, I really think that, um, you you probably should curate some kind of course like a coaching you know where you can actually maybe do a zoom or go in and talk to medical students just as they're starting because I think a lot of people get in and they just don't know what to expect not just medical students nursing students they go into this very challenging um, careers not knowing what to expect and not being prepared and you know we we we, we, I think a lot of, for a lot of uh, students, they, once they get into medical school, they're like, okay, we're in now because the hurdle of getting into medical school, that's a whole nother, <laughs> you know, journey. And then, so once they're in, they think, okay, we're in, but not realizing that your journey has just started. This is the real thing. And I think for me, medical school is really challenging because I got in very, very young in medical into medical school. And I was just not prepared for the amount, the volume of work that was required. You gotta, you have to read a lot. And if you don't know how to read a lot, or if you don't know, like what you said earlier on, uh, knowing how best you study, uh, some people, read best by um, learn best by reading some by listening and if you don't know how best you study you find yourself like going to what you were doing going to class studying all night and just coming out with a 49 and maybe that was not the strategy for you maybe you learn in a different way so exactly. if people don't understand how best they study and then they go after materials that don't have a high yield you know it was very exactly. interesting because when I started taking preparing for my USMLEs um, to move to the States, um, there was a book I found called High Yield. It was High Yield for the USMLE. And that really gives you the, you know, sort of the nuts and bolts of the substance you need to know to get through those exams, because uh, you may be a good doctor or good medical student, but you don't have the test taking skills. Then you go take the exam and then you fail one, two, three, you start, you know, you get discouraged and some people end up dropping out of medical school. So having the test taking skills. So I think a lot of people get into med school and they are just not prepared for success. You know, they, they, they don't have the, they, they don't have who to call or they don't have the mentors that will give them uh, that, uh, you know, sort of blueprint and say, okay, this is what works, this is a strategy that works. And having that balance, 
you know, having the exactly. balance, not just going to school and just reading, you got to be able to network, do other things outside of um, your um, field of study, because you have to bring to life that balance, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, you know, when I saw your book, it really, I really was so interested in it, because right now the hot topic in America and globally is physician burnout. That's the latest hot topic. Now everybody's talking about physician wellness and how to balance it. And then I thought, you know, if you can teach medical students how to balance, then when they graduate and they become full-fledged doctors, they're not going to have that issue with physician burnout. So you really have to attack this physician burnout issue at the root cause. And most of the time, it starts in medical school. You you were so right, Dr. Ongozi. It's it's um it's it's something that I'm but well, you know, you know the way you say you're you're putting up something. And you, you mentioned something about having some innate gift and we all have something, especially if you look in words and you discover whatever talent that you have. Mm -hmm. So I think I realized early on in life that mine was from speaking and writing, mm -hmm. which I've just been working on and I've been doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so for medical students, I actually, I started something here. I work in UCH presently. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of that informally with my students, mm -hmm. but you are right. It is time to take it to a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. It's time to, to, to make sure that this is not just staying within you know, my locale within where I am, I, I have to extend my tentacles and um, put it out there, help medical students and residents and make sure that they have the coping skills. And mm -hmm. the thing about it is at the end of the day, you would realize that there's a lot of pressure on the medical students right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's not even just about medicine anymore. You go on social media, they see things on social media and it makes them believe that, oh, I'm not doing well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm behind. So, you know, it's not just, they're not just dealing with the pressures of medical school alone mm -hmm. or residency. They are dealing with the pressure of even social media right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally agree with you that we need to, you know, be, um, become better mentors. We need to make sure that we are trying to um, um, make the path easier for those that are coming behind. Because if we build, you know, the, those that are coming behind, and at the end of the day, we are building a community of stronger better doctors that are, that will not experience, not that they won't experience it because physician burnout is a real thing. And it's mm -hmm. not just happening in America alone. Mm -hmm. It's here in Nigeria. And mm -hmm. again, one thing I've realized that even the older ones that are talking to the younger ones about burnout, mm -hmm. we are also experiencing burnout ourselves. Right. So we all have to, it's, it's a responsibility on the senior ones to make sure that you are helping the younger ones so that they can navigate the path better, the, the path better. And the older ones too, they also have to help themselves such that while helping others, they don't break down right. and they don't get to the point. Yeah, because sometimes in the process of helping other people, you forget yourself. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot. And sometimes you are ashamed to come out to say, oh, I, I am experiencing this too, even though I'm trying to teach other people not to go through what, what I'm going through right now. But we need to also build that community, even for the older, older ones like right now. So at the end of the day, it is something that we need to keep working on. And um, like you said, um, it's a process. I started with this book. There are so many other things in the work that I, I'm just going to make sure that I push out there to, mm -hmm. to ensure that burnout, to ensure that mentoring takes the forefront in everything that I'm doing right now. Okay. So we've been talking to Dr. Shakira Gold Olufadi, and she's the author of MediThrive. So tell us, where can we find your book and where can we find you? What social media platforms? So um, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, I have um, at Skin and All, at Skin and All underscore, on Twitter, on Instagram. On Facebook, I have a page at skin and all underscore. But on Facebook, I also have a personal page, Shakirat Gold Olufadi. On Instagram, my personal page is Shakirat Gold. And all my platforms, you have the link to get the books, um, to get the book in Nigeria. There's a Flutterwave link to order the book in Nigeria on my Twitter page. 
there's a flutter wave um, there's a flutter wave link all, on all my social media platforms then i also have the book on amazon all you need to do is to type medi thrive on amazon you can get the kindle copy you can also get the hard copy whichever one you'd like to read so um, I also have a website. Um, there's a blog there, and I I put my thoughts down. I like to write on mentoring. I like I write on relationships, life lessons, humor, field posts, and I also talk about dermatology. Let's not forget that I'm first a dermatologist and a physician. So I write about all that on my on my blog, and that is www.skinandall. Dot com. So it's skin and all on, on almost all the social media platforms, ex except for my personal pages, where I have my name as Shakirat Gold Olufadi on Facebook, and on Instagram, Shakirat Gold. Fantastic. This was wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I really Thank appreciate you. you. <laughs> and nice have, talking to you today. have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you.